Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and what I have for you today is a little indie horror title from itch.io called The Windows Are Gone. Not entirely sure what it's about but I thought the visuals looked cool and that's always a plus for me. Whenever I'm looking through games on itch that's what I'm looking for, something that kind of appeals to me. I've been sick and uh, just gonna try and get into back into the swing of things with a you know, a short little indie horror title to continue along with the spooky month of October. I'm still not feeling quite 100%, but we're going to power through it and see what this game has to offer. Okay, so without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's jump right in. In my dreams, I see this house. Is it in Silent Hill? Sort of like in your dreams? That's a lovely house. I'm not sure about the coat of paint. I might change that. I feel it calling for me. The house calls to him. Or her. Whomever this may be. I'm not 100% sure. Got as a moving van. I guess we're moving in. Ever since the accident. The soundtrack's pretty cool, so far. I know it's trying to be menacing and whatnot, but it's very pink, and uh, I, I don't find that super menacing at all. Whatever I do, I can't stop thinking about this house in Mariana. Hmm. House in Mariana. So I answered it. You talking to a house, pal? I mean, there's been stranger things people people have talked to in these kinds of games. The windows are gone. Interesting. Okay, we'll continue. Hi, honey. How are you holding up? You know, taking it one day at a time. That was the funeral. I wish I could have been there for you. I didn't go. Couldn't do it. I understand. She would have understood too. You know that, right? Right. What about your new house? It's in Mariana, right? Quite a long way from home. Yeah. I'm on my way there right now, actually. I'll text you when I get there. I don't know what she said. I was pressing F, but for some reason it... Okay. My uh, sensitivity is a little strange. Here we go. Tab to pick up the phone. Okay, she said, all right, be careful on the road. Love you. Let's reply. Hey, I just arrived at the house. I'll move the boxes inside and I'll text you later. Okay. A map of the house. Front porch, living room, hallway, bathroom. Yes, mother. Thanks for letting me know. Careful not to hurt your back with the boxes. Yep, will do. Okay, so we're moving into our new house. This house was speaking to me, apparently. Ah. A murder of crows. Never an ominous sign. Well, I mean, let's just go get a lay of the land real quick, huh? Shall we? Let's do that. Alright. Yeah. That's a... I already got a TV. That's nice. Oh, hello? Okay. I got little drawers I can open up. A little VCR action going on here. A working VHS player. That's awesome. I want one so bad I want to get one. Oh. A VHS tape labeled tape number one, my family. I could probably take this to, to a VHS player and... Yeah, probably. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, as the tape starts playing, I can see a middle-aged man handling the camera. I quickly realize that the man is in the same house that I'm in. He's all smiles as he moves away from the camera and joins his family as they can be seen playing around in the backyard. I wonder if they're the previous owners of this house. Obviously. More than likely. 
His wife and children seem to be having a great time, laughing and running around. There's a moment where the wife comes up behind the husband and puts her arms around him. They both smile and briefly look at the camera. It's nice, really. It sounds nice. Can't help but feel like there's something off, though. It's like there's an underlying tension, a sense of unease that's hard to describe. Maybe it's just me, but I get this feeling that things aren't as perfect as they seemed on the surface. Feels like the happiness portrayed here is a deceptive lure tempting me to bite it and overwhelm me with its actual intentions. It's written on this man's face. It's like he's trying to hide something behind his smile. I hear footsteps and stuff in my head. The tape ends when one of the kids trips and falls to the ground. While the mother tends to the crying boy, the father's disingenuous smile finally fades away as he approaches the camera to turn it off. Once he's right in front of the frame, though, I get an eerie feeling of intrusiveness as if he caught me prying on his personal life. The tape ends. It's a strange feeling, watching these recordings of someone else's life. I can't help but wonder what happened to them, where they are now. Did they move away a long time ago? Are they still together? It's like I'm peeking into a world that's not mine, a world that's both familiar and foreign at the same time. <clears throat> well... I mean, it sounded like a nice enough tape, I guess. I, I don't I don't know. But, you know, like you said, there's some weirdness going on. Uh, 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 yes. Everything good? Yeah, all good. Found this weird VHS tape. I think it's from the old owners of this house. Yeah, Mom. I, uh, you know, I'm not doing too bad for myself, though. Got me a nice, nice little joint here. Did you watch it? What's in it? I was expecting you to lecture me not to do that, but yes, I did. Saw some weird stuff. I mean... Ah, backyard. Here we go. Wow, it's like a prison yard. Oh, weird face. Okay. Anyhow. Yeah, uh, I've been sick, so I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, such as recording and things like that. I've got Plenty to edit. Plenty of uh, layers of fear to finish editing. Um, to con to continue before continuing along in that game. Um, I don't really have anything else lined up, other than that. So I figured I'd you know I'd run through something like this, see what it has to offer. If I can on un ooh unwind a bit, you know I. Uh, just want to check out the house. So if I'm very low energy in this video, I apologize. This room is locked for some reason. I wonder if there's a key somewhere around the house. Yeah, probably. Boob lights. Always nice to see the boob lights. Ooh. I mean, so far it's... You know, it seems like a well thought out game. It's, it's uh, pretty impressive about some of these games on itch. And for the most part, you can play them for free, although, you know, it doesn't hurt to to tip the creator, throwing them a little a little money for their time and effort. I think this game is around 40 minutes long, which is, you know, that's perfect, especially for me for today. Um, so I can just kind of get through this without, you know... Without too much investment and time or anything like that. So we'll just see what it has to offer. I just want to kind of get a get a good feel of the house. I was hearing some creaks and cr cronks whenever I was, you know, pilfering through the old family's life. This is a big house for me, though. It's calling to me. It's huge. This is a big house for one dude. Hello. See, I heard it again. Yeah, this is this is a pretty big, pretty big joint for one feller. Ooh, master bedroom, I presume. Very nice. Very nice. I think this is supposed to be only along the uh, along the lines of more psychological horror than than anything so that's right up my alley as well if you know anything about me you know i like the psychological horror more than i like the jump in your face and try and scare you horror. not sure i'll get used to this bed but it'll have to do for now 
Well, look, man, you know, we got us a nice place here. I don't know if I got a deal on it or if I'm just doing that well for myself, you know. And I'm a, a single dude. Can afford me a, a nice country home with two floors and plenty of bedrooms and, and bathrooms. A nice spacious backyard. A long driveway. All right, let's see. Living room, upstairs master bedroom, guest. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and grab this one for now. And stick it in the living room. All right. Living room. There we go. Upstairs master bedroom, yes. And... I always hated moving boxes. It's never any fun. It's the worst thing you could possibly do. Moving. But, you know, once you get settled in, it's nice. I'm, I'm assuming this is master bedroom. This is, a, this is a big bedroom. We'll place you here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Flip. Yeah, upstairs master bedroom, and this is the guest bedroom. Let's go grab a box. Grab us another box here. Get moved in before the sun goes down. Or at least the... I don't have a whole lot of boxes, you know. That's good, I guess. Hi. Music. It's a nice music. It's nice. a nice music. It's a nice tune. I like it. I like it. It's very calming so far, you know? The windows are all still here as well, so that's nice. Is this the guest bedroom? Right? Yeah. Yep. Sure is. And that's the bathroom. Okay. Well, Mom... I guess I can't text you again just yet, huh? huh, Mom? We've got master bathroom, guest bathroom, downstairs office. All right. Master bath. Is there any way I can just... Why don't I just do this? I'm going to just start doing this here. I'll place them on the porch. That way, whenever I come back down, all I got to do is just fucking grab them off the porch, you know? Think harder. Think harder. No, that's not what I meant to say. Work smarter, not harder, is what I meant to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my, my brain is, isn't quite uh, back to full working capacity at the moment. All right, so this is the guest bathroom. I'll go ahead and place this in the upstairs guest bathroom while listening to our nice funeral home piano. What it reminds me of a visitation so that's kind of morbid i guess <laughs> all right there we go we'll put you in there piano's done at least i don't feel like i'm at a visitation any longer uh, let's see master bathroom let us run this up here i don't have any friends like you know you know sometimes you could coax a friend into helping you if you promise them like a beer and a pizza or some shit uh, it's like the typical moving pay, uh, the moving payment, even though, there we go. I feel like friends that ask you to help them move should offer you like an entire fucking salary to do it because this shit sucks. Downstairs office. It fucking sucks. Like, you want me to help you move? Sure, I'll help you move, but fuck, man. You, uh... You are uh, gonna have to compensate me a little bit better than just a fucking piece of piece of pizza and a and a thing of beer. Ah, here we go. Let's see. Yep, I keep. I gotta. I gotta actually grab. Okay, that door's locked. And there we are. Off us. Keep. I gotta. I gotta switch to grab. All right. There we are. Nice, nice, very nice. My door's open. You know, 
Oh my god. I did not expect you to be here. Hello there. You must be our new neighbor. Suppose I am. Do you live nearby? I do, yes. A couple of kilometers that way. She points to her right hand side. My husband and I. I, I live there. Okay. Welcome, welcome. Mariana is a wonderful town. Lovely people. Uh, can you tell me about it? Well, Mariana is a quiet little town, but it's full of beauty. Oh, yes. Make sure you visit the Aracarias Park when you have a, cho a chance. Beautiful trees there. Those are always fucking names of stuff that I can't pronounce in here. In these games, I fucking, I suck. I see. Also, people here are known for their friendliness. That being said, I hope you understand that we take pride in our traditions. Please, don't embarrass us with your differences. Look familiar. Do I know you? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe? It's what they say, small world and all. In any case, we know each other now, don't we? Okay, can you help? Can I help you with anything, ma'am? Well, I couldn't help but notice that the house had been purchased and that the new owner would be here today. So I baked you something special as a welcoming gift. God. I'm sure it's delicious. Oh, thank you. I think you're going to love it. I left it on your kitchen counter. Wait, excuse me? Oh, don't worry, my dear. I know this house inside and out. You know this house. This house has a lot of history. It's a very unique one. In a way, I think you know it too. Every corner and every shadow seems familiar to you, doesn't it? In any case, you'll get familiar with it soon enough. All right, then. Now, do me a favor, my dear. And try some of that pastry I made for you, will you? I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, just please stay here this time, all right? <laughs> okay. Uh, eh. Fuck off. Hey, woman. Actually, you know, I've got boxes to move. I can't be... Oh, my God. You're <laughs> creepy. You put it in the kitchen. plate of grastoli made by the neighbor. I'm not sure if I should eat this, but the smell is irresistible. So a strange woman claims to know everything about the house, knows that you know, knows that it's been calling to you, looks familiar, was probably the wife in the video that you just watched, comes into your house uninvited, puts the pastry, the grastoli, on the counter in the kitchen, and, uh, and you're going to eat it. Even then, that she just she puts it in there, and then she comes back outside and rings the doorbell. Okay, whatever, you know, we'll eat it. Fuck it. Tasty, good, good stuff. Thanks, I appreciate it. Okay, this note just says "Welcome home." I'm assuming it came from that lady. Where does she go? Excuse me, Barbara. You look like a Barbara. As I unload the boxes into my new house, I couldn't help but be reminded of the toll the trip to Mariana had taken on me. That combined with its odd encounter with the neighbor made me realize I was exhausted. I decided it'd be wise to take a quick nap in the master bedroom. Besides, I was curious to test the comfort of my new bed. No! No! I've got boxes to put up! I can't pick any more up, of course. Alright, well, I'm not gonna eat the whole fucking plate, because... I don't trust the lady. We got two uh, grastolis left. I already ate one more than I wanted to. I just wanted to, I just wanted to test one out, just for the sake of getting her off my fucking porch. But you know, dude, let's search this fucking place because that door. She probably walked back in in my bathroom. No. Whatever. Storage? No. Alright, Barbara. Well, you know what? Thanks for the gross stoli. Whatever the f... You in there? 
No? Okay. Whatever the fuck that is, I have no idea what Grostoli is. Alright, well. <clears throat> I guess we lying down. Seems like a good idea. Just a quick nap never turns out to be a quick nap. It's always like you wake up fucking six hours later and you feel like you have been, you know, you feel like you've been run through a fucking meat grinder. At least that's how it is for me whenever I decide to take naps. If, well, used to, anyhow. I don't get to take naps anymore that are, like, restful. <laughs> this time I didn't dream about this house. Probably because I was finally here. Probably. I mean, yeah, I could see that being a thing. No. This time I had a different dream. Wait. And what kind of dream was that? Oh shit. Hi! Oh no. My wife and I were in a hurry to the hospital. She was clearly in a lot of pain. Oh, since the accident. Fuck. Find myself in a, in my car, quickly driving my wife to the hospital since her water had just broken. Honey, you gonna be okay? Yes, just avoid any bumpy roads, please. Have you caught your mother? Uh, no, I forgot. Can you call her once we get there, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Please remember the highway is blocked. Now please hurry. I will. Hold on tight. This has got to be one of the most nerve wracking Oh, fuck. I was gonna say, driving your pregnant partner to the hospital is already nerve-wracking enough. Oh my god, what's going on? Jessica. Uh... I can straight up just 360 around in my car seat, though. That's... Oh boy. So this is why you're alone. Well, pal, I'm sorry. That's, uh, unfortunate. Yeah, just driving a, a a woman who's about to have a baby to the hospital is already terrifying enough. Much less that shit happening. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. God, what a horrible nightmare. That dripping noise. I heard it while I was asleep. Where's it coming from? Oh, you know, the sink, the bathroom. Hello, are you drip dropping in my bathroom? Barbara, I don't have time for your shenanigans. Well, we go into the basement, I guess. Got a leak. Pipes. Oh, another VHS. How lovely. Oh, boy. Oh, great. There's a leak in the ceiling. I guess that's what I get for buying an old house. Hmm. Get a weird feeling about this, though. I can't quite explain it. Maybe it's just the constant noise. Maybe it's the water itself. I don't know. I just can't shake this odd feeling I have when thinking about it. But I'll see to it tomorrow. I just can't be bothered right now. Gotta go back to bed. I'm not going back to bed, pal. I just had a shitty nightmare. No. Why would I want to go back to bed? Just to have more nightmares. My fucking... Battered wife... On the way to giving birth. If it wasn't that nap enough, you still got boxes to unload, pal. Fuck it. I guess we lying back down. Let's go back into the dream world. Can't be any worse than the fucking Max Payne nightmares. That's probably the most terrifying nightmare sequence in any game that I've ever played. And Max Payne wasn't even... Max Payne was strangely a horror game. <laughs> Without even intending to be, it was a horror game. I think it's just the aesthetic and stuff like that. The mood. And the, the nightmare sequence. <laughs> Alright. Well, hey. No nightmares this time, at least. So that's nice, right? Still drip-dropping. Good morning, son. 
Your mom told me you're uh, okay. Sorry. Good morning, son. Your mom told me you arrived in Mariana yesterday. How's it going? Well, I got a leak. An old woman named Barbara came into my house and left me some grostolis. And I had a dream about my dead wife. Hey, Dad. Well, you know. All right. I know. I'm sorry. How's the new house? Is it all you were hoping for? It's okay. I was bringing the boxes inside yesterday and got tired. I'll get back to doing that right now. Aha! VHS tape. Let's grab it. It's the... Oh! Oh, goodness. Puddle is getting large. Can't be avoiding those things, my dude. You're gonna have some mold damage. Pop this in here. The tape shows that man, who I assume with the previous owner of this house, working in the basement with the camera sitting on a counter and pointing at him. He seems to be alone in the house, although I can just about hear his children playing in the backyard. The tape is slightly damaged, but I can make out most of what's happening. For a few seconds, he just stays there in silence, as if anxiously rehearsing his first words to the camera. When he finally starts speaking, I'm suddenly caught by a sense of uneasiness and I shiver slightly. The man also seems uneasy and disturbed. His words, measured and hesitant, give off a sense that he's trying to describe a feeling that he cannot fully comprehend but has taken over him. He speaks of a sense of impending disaster, of a terrible event that he thinks is about to occur to his family. He's less and less coherent until he's taken by his own emotions and accidentally drops the tool he was using on the ground. He starts crying, carefully covering his mouth so that no one notices him. He mentions the terrible event will be his fault. Watching him, I can't help but feel that his words are directed at me somehow. It's as if he knows that I'm here watching this and is trying to communicate with me. The way he talks about the events is as if they have already happened. But then why is he doing this? Why isn't he doing anything to prevent it from happening? What's the point of these tapes? Oh boy. You're like... More than likely... Uh... Well? I don't know, man. It sounds like he was sucked into some alternate reality and he's trying to warn you through VHS tapes. Also... Ooh, let's see. Can I look at this again? It seems to have gotten a bit worse overnight. I'll definitely have to call someone to see this. Man, this constant noise will make me go insane. Well, I mean, you could be, uh, what is that torture called? You could be directly under it, tied, and just having that drip on your forehead. And after a specific amount of time, you know, it gets kind of infuriating. Okay, well, note's still there. Thanks, Barbara. Okay, let's see. Upstairs storage. Sure. We'll go ahead and load the porch up some more. Yeah, anyway, I got like two beds, three baths. Hell yeah. Not too shabby. And a kitchen. All right. We got the kitchen. Kitchen box. Plus an office. Two beds, three baths, an office. A nice kitchen. All right, so there's a VHS tip on the fucking counter. Okay. Can I not set this down? All right. Tape labeled three. Uh, tape. Oh my god. My brain. I'm sorry. A VHS tape labeled tape number three rumble. I'm pretty sure this wasn't here yesterday. It wasn't, but we'll watch it. As the tape starts playing, the scene before me is disorienting and extremely unsettling. The man from the previous tape stands in a place impossible to identify. He appears to hover in darkness, surrounded by countless long red streaks that stretch as far as the eye can see, like veins that mysteriously emerge from above and just as inexplicably disappear beneath him. Oddly enough, I can feel them pulsating beyond the TV screen and onto my chest, suffocating with me with the same feelings the man appears to be experiencing. 
In that crushing darkness, I inexplicably feel the man's despair, guilt, and regret, yet I cannot bring myself to stop the tape and I keep watching it. The camera shakes and glitches and at times seems to be a part of the man's body somehow. His demeanor terrifies me. His words are fragmented, barely forming coherent sentences. In the brief moments that I see his face, there's a deep ache in his eyes as if he carries an overwhelming burden on his shoulders. He stammers, feeling feelings of regret and calls for his family. But he's all alone in that place. I feel like his family is no longer reachable, and he blames himself for it. It's a haunting sight, and I can feel his pain seeping through the screen, echoing within my own being as if somehow shared consciousness. In the midst of this turmoil, his mouth opens wide, ready to unleash his agonies, but before he can do so, the tape abruptly ends. I feel broken by the intensity of what I've just witnessed, and almost feel ashamed to look at my own reflection on the screen, and yet... I feel, still feel like this was needed somehow. Yeah. Okay. Well. Some, uh, some badness going down. In the house. What did you do to your fam? Is it just like a classic case of Amityville horror going on there? I don't know. But, uh, upstairs storage. I'm getting my fucking cardio in, though, these last few days, apparently. Up the stairs, down the stairs, up again, down again, back and forth, and back and forth. Someone's in my house. Is it Barbara? I don't know. I should really close my fucking doors like I usually do in these games. Although, closing the doors last time, well, too late, and EXP... War Traumas demo didn't fucking help me out too much. So it was like... <laughs> it was a good scare, though. You left the door open. No, I fucking did not leave the door open. Main hallway, huh? Okay. Uh, this hallway? No? Okay. Uh, this hallway. Yeah, there, there, there we go. As I was bringing in the boxes, I couldn't help but repeatedly ask myself what I was actually doing here. I acted on impulse when I bought this house, but the vivid and recurrent dreams I had after the accident plagued my mind and kept haunting me until I finally gave in. It's like I didn't have a choice. Maybe it's the desperation to start fresh or the need to escape the memories of that dreadful night, but here I was in this unfamiliar place with no one but myself. For a moment, I questioned my sanity, so I took a deep breath letting the musty smell of the old house fill my lungs. And with a sense of determination, I whispered to myself, I'm here now, and I have to make the most of it. Still, I felt like I needed to turn this into my new home, so I set out to unpack all the boxes and decorate the place. Okay, well. Hey, so we unpacking boxes, eh? Oh, okay. Cool. Open. Okay. Alright, hey, I guess we'll... <laughs> sure. Cool. I'll put these folded clothes in here. This is interesting. <laughs> uh, more folded clothes... We'll put them alongside the other folded clown, I guess. Bedding set one. I fit a lot of stuff in this box, huh? Clock radio. Which side do I want to sleep on? We'll sleep on this side. Uh, sure, we'll put one there. Not really my, my taste or my style, but, you know, we'll put some here. There's no symmetry to this room. You know, a couple of paintings. I'm really going to have to go to a flea market or something after this. Since I can't even make my fucking bed. I just want to make it. Okay, fuck it. All right, let's see what we got here. Bath mat. Plop this right in front of the... Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Close you. Plop this right in front of the shower there. Sure. 
I don't know why the fuck do I have flip flops in my bathroom. We'll put the flip flops here, I guess. I don't. I don't fucking know. I don't. I got bathroom flops. Uh, the, the. This all seems counterintuitive. Put you on this side. Decorate, quote unquote, my bathroom. No, I don't have any fucking. Let me set you here for a second. I don't have a towel rack. No. All right, well, we'll just put the fucking towels under the sink over here. And we'll put the trash bin next to the pisser. All right, well, this is a shitty bathroom, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. What we got? Uh, let's see. Hey, man. How you doing? Hey, a bit overwhelmed, honestly. Yeah? All right. Let's see, photo album. Let's actually just grab this box. We'll pop this on the floor for a sec. Picture frame, encyclopedia set. Yeah, same here. She was an incredible person. My sister loved you, man. I know, and she hated your guts. <laughs> All right, well, let's grab the encyclopedias. We'll toss them in here, I guess. Can I do that? I I want to decorate it to my liking. Thank you very much, and I can't even do that. I have to put them here. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. But seriously, it wasn't your fault, man. Remember that. Right. <laughs> this is shitty. I I don't have much to work with here. Okay. Take care. Thanks, Bradla. I don't know. Hang on. Grab the photo album. Yeah, no. Because the memories are too painful. At the moment. I can't even put this in the fucking... Okay. I cannot decorate this how I'd like. Clearly. There. Uh, sculpture. Sure. Not tacky at all. Oh boy, Barbara. I can't grab anything else now. Fuck. Like, I'm trying to decorate my house. Would you people leave me the fuck alone? I'm having trouble doing that. Would you stop opening the... What the fuck am I staring at? It was like a, a an orb. <laughs> what was that? Hi! TV turned itself on and I could just about make out a sound over the static. Is that someone crying? Hello? Your door's open. If I just ignore it? How about that? What if I just do that? Let me go see if my basement is full of fucking water yet. Oh, not, not quite. Okay. Ugh, I always get stuck on that step. Did that door finally unlock? I don't want these anymore. These Gristolis. I don't got a good feeling about the Gristolis. Alright, and finally we'll just put the photo album there. If I can, if I can. Is this Franco from your auto insurance? I must inform you that your car has been declared a total loss. Hello? Alright, uh, what now? Thanks, Franco. I appreciate that, pal. Opening up old wounds. Alright, well, you put some bedding out here. Here. There we go. That's the guest bedroom. What you got? We are currently investigating the details of the accident to determine the liability of the parties involved. Let me know when you have an update. Alright, next bathroom. What was that noise? I think it came from the basement. I've been hearing noises, my dude. I don't know. By the way, sorry for your loss. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. I appreciate that. Alright. Oh my god. Who's this? You're distracting me here. I'm trying to put up my, my toiletries. 
It's like a shitty place to put a laundry basket, but you know, I don't have much. I don't have much of a choice. Alright, so that's these rooms done. Let's go check the basement. Because, you know, whenever you hear creepy sounds in a house, or creepy shit's already happening in, might as well go down. I told you, you can't let these things go, my dude. Oh god, what's happening here? This is terrible. This leak is quickly deteriorating the ceiling. I feel like I have to do something or it'll collapse soon, but... I can barely look at this thing. It's making me lightheaded and nauseous. It's frustrating, though. I know I need to take care of it, but I feel so repulsed all I can do is ignore it. God, I hate looking at it. Buddy. You are growing a mold monster. In your house. Old Drippy. If you know, you know. Let's go. Um, I can, I can get, my, get my toolbox. Where's my kitchen box? Alright, let's go ahead and fucking set this place up, huh? Where, where should I put the wall calendar? We'll put it, we'll put it here. I suck at decor. I'm not an interior decorator, okay? Thank you very- what the- I can't get anything else out of here. I can't look at anything. What the fuck is- what the fuck is happening? The windows are gone. Did I spend too much time fucking decorating? What is that tapping? I think I spent too much time. Oh, it's open. Uh, excuse me. Is there a VHS tape somewhere that I'm missing? Oh, hello! It's the orb! Excuse me. Excuse me. Something like the door. I'm being absorbed. It's just like a big nothing. Holy fuck. Oh, boy. Is this old Drippy? Hello? Uh... Oh, this is like what happened, the description of that VHS tape. Oh, hi, buddy. I'm trapped in the VHS tape with you now. My windows seem to have disappeared. Uh, hello. How goes it? Oh, is this my wife? My fee. Um, I'm so sorry about the accident. Can we, uh... Uh-huh. Hello. Oh, boy. Hey, uh... Why can I have a hug? No? Clearly, our dude here is going through some things. I uh, think he might be feeling a little guilty. It was your fault. What? Oh boy. My windows are... Oh shit. Things upside down. Such a disappointment. Why are you saying this? Hey, uh, I just want to decorate my house and try and push some of the guilt that I'm feeling down. <laughs> oh, I'm in the basement. Fuck. Old Drippy. I can't fathom what I'm seeing. There's an extremely repulsive slime forming from the leak in the ceiling. It gives off a horrible stench that makes me nauseous, lightheaded, and disoriented. It looks alive. It's old Drippy! 
Oh my goodness. Holy shit. Wife, when did you turn into Spider-Man? Spider-Woman, Spider-Woman, Spider-Girl. Hi! Fuck. Birth. I could probably take this to the VHS player and play it. Hi, wife. This is not fucking cool, goddamn. As the tape starts playing, I find myself instantly immersed in a nightmarish, distorted reflection of the man's tortured psyche. The scene is a collection of fragmented images, disjointed sounds and memories, and deeply unsettling feelings, somehow merged and played all at once. It's an incoherent mess. I can barely make out what I'm seeing. It frightens me to my core, and at the same time, it's sort of beautiful and makes sense to me. Is it just you that you're seeing? The man's face and body are completely distorted, beyond recognition. If I ever knew who he was before, I can no longer and never will again. Uh, but at this moment, I feel an overwhelming surge of empathy for him, as if his pain reverberated within my own body. The tape becomes a conduit for his suffering, a mirror reflecting my own battle along with his. The fragments of his voice reaching my ears like shards of broken glass speak of a foreshadowed catastrophe that has shattered his world just like mine. In the midst of the chaos, there's a moment of eerie stillness. The man's eyes meet mine through the flickering and glitchy screen, a fleeting recognition that sends a chill down my spine. He's now fully aware of my presence, and his torment reaches beyond the confines of the tape. And then, in a crescendo of madness and despair, the tape abruptly cuts off. The abrupt ending leaves me gasping for breath, my heart pounding in my chest. The darkness lingers, echoing with unanswered questions and haunting whispers. It's haunting and inviting all at once. I'm left grappling with the fragments of his shattered existence, piercing through, piercing together the shards of his unraveling mind. This man has g is gone forever now. The tape has become a portal into the darkest recesses of our consciousness, forcing us to confront the demons that lurk within. And so yeah, you just these tapes are just like your subconscious, and you're trying to grapple and deal with your guilt, and you can't do that. You've done haven't successfully done that anyhow. Especially you think it's your fault, your wife was pregnant, doesn't sound like uh, anything good happened in the accident. Um, and for whatever reason, that's fucking creepy. He's seeing this house. I guess the house could just be a metaphor for himself, you know, he locked himself inside of his house. His mind, basically. Try to escape, trying to escape his guilt. These paintings seem to have been painted by Jessica, but I've never seen them before. Cool sounds. Creepy. Okay. Boy. Interesting paintings. Uh, very nice. I like them. Thanks, honey. Okay, found a door. She keeps leading to a basement. And old Drippy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Please don't tell me you're making baby sounds. I, uh... I, I can't handle that shit. It's a little too close to home whenever you have a... Hi! Whenever you have a child. Hey, wife. How you doing? She seems to be distracted by something right in front of her. Honey. Did you see the latest paintings I made? Each took an eternity to finish, but I think they turned out perfect. I did. I was thinking of you and our baby Laura, you know. That's why they look so wonderful. Jessica, do you remember that question I used to ask you? What does God look like? Yes, what does God look like? <laughs> it's funny that you were never religious, but you've always tried to help me understand why we could never truly see him. I really appreciate that, you know? I really miss you, but I see him now. You see, I see him and he's beautiful. Do you see him too? 
story, but I don't. Ah, pity. I wish you could see him too. So powerful and astounding and devastating. I feel like tearing my face off, but in the most wonderful way. I don't know if I can let you go. Oh, don't worry about me anymore. We have our baby to care for now. Silly, do you hear that? She's crying, the poor thing. I should go check on our little girl. Little girl. She's probably hungry. Uh... Oh, God. I don't know if I'm like... Are these even like the right conversational choices should I be making? I, I don't fucking know. Is there like different options? Oh boy. Yep. I figured that was the baby. Look at you, honey. See? I told you, fa I told you your father. You're hungry, aren't you? Don't worry, Laura. Mommy will feed you. Oh, hello, darling. You've been away for a while. We've barely seen you recently, come to think of it. Where have you been? Don't you miss us? It's so lonely and empty here. Mulair doesn't stop crying for her dad. Honey, I think it's time I let you go. No, no. You know what? I have a better idea. Why don't you join us? Laura misses you so much, and she's so hungry all the time. I really want to satiate her hunger. I can't see her suffering like this. My dude, you gotta let go. Can't join you. I'm so sorry. I see. Oh, she's so hungry. Look at her. I'll go ahead and feed her now then. Pity you can't join us. She really needs her daddy. Yeah, you, you gotta let go, man. I know... Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I know it fucking sucks. You know? I mean, here's the thing. I can't fucking imagine. Let family go. I can't imagine losing your family like that. But it was an accident. You can't let it... You have to try and find a way through it. Instead of continuing to, to torture yourself. The leak seems to have stopped. Yeah, you can't get... Man, that was fucked up, though. It's like everything just happened suddenly. <laughs> I mean, understandably, I don't know if I would be able to let go. You know, something like that happened. I don't know if I wouldn't let it consume me, but I like to think that, you know, they wouldn't want that. I guess we'll leave the house. I, I, I don't know. Um, been recording for about an hour and 11 minutes, huh? ever since the accident. Guilt has haunted me. Yep, it's the Silent Hill effect. And the dad in the uh, VHS tape let it consume him, it sounds like. He never escaped it. So I built a labyrinth. What do you mean you built a labyrinth? Oh, in your mind? To try and avoid it, and found my way out. The windows are gone. Well, that was a nice game. Uh, it was, it was, yeah, you got the good ending. Four or five secrets found. Ah, shit. 
well? I don't know, I really liked it. Um, I'll have to uh, go check out some more Scary Cube games on Itch, see if they have any more, and uh, check them out. You could check them out as well, I would recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, I, I really liked it. I thought it was, uh, I, I like you know, I like how simplistic it is, and um, I enjoy the psychological uh, horror, the psychological aspect of it. Uh, because, you know, it, it hits a little closer to home. It's a little bit more realistic. And it's a little bit more relatable whenever you're dealing with things like guilt and trauma and stuff like that. Um, and it just being portrayed in a, you know, in an interesting way in this medium. You know, movies and games and things like that. They're able to capture a feeling better than, you know, we can really kind of portray it whenever you're feeling something like guilt you may feel like you're locked in a house and all the windows are disappearing and there's no way out of it you know what i mean except for either giving into it or going through it finding your own way out making your own way out of it uh, like i said i don't really know what it feels like to feel guilt on this level uh, but you know having having a child and having having a partner i can't imagine having an accident like that and not feeling like it was my fault in some way it's sort of receding into myself and uh you know building this house around uh around my around my mind basically to for me to kind of retreat into and get lost in um but you know i, I really like the way they're able to portray this kind of thing in these mediums you know, because like I said, it's it's more effective than just sitting with it inside of your head. You know, and if you if you're you know feeling that way, you get to play these things and and see that you're not alone. Other people do feel these kinds of things, obviously. So, anyhow, it was a very cool little game. I liked it. Um, I like I said, I do appreciate the psychological aspect of things. I I appreciate that there was no over the top in your face loud is scary kind of scares you know because loud is not scary um there was some disturbing moments in the game uh but you know that's why it was effective there were small and and not so in your face and you just kind of knowing what this person's going through it makes them even more effective but anyhow that's all from me. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to stop rambling on. I've got plenty of to do. I've got I've got things to edit, but I just wanted to get this out of the way to try and get back into the swing of recording after being sick. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I really appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate all the uh, all the love on these videos because I do put a lot of time into them, editing them. Even though it might not seem like it, I'm learning new things almost every day. Every time I start editing, so. Um, I, I put a lot of time into them. Uh, I put, you know, put a lot of love into them. So I appreciate, I appreciate any and uh, any support that that you guys give me. So, yeah, if you like it, why not leave a like and subscribe and uh, you know hit your bell notification. That way you see whenever I whenever I put things like this out. So yeah. Anyhow, thank you all for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> Have a wonderful day.